Hey peoples, what's up? I'm gonna demo something for you. It's kind of like a review demo. This is a Mojo Tone. It's uh, simply called the 50 watt bass amp. And it's a kit and I made it in my house and uh, it works, which is a miracle because it's only the second amp I ever made. And um, I was playing this uh, this Mark bass, which is uh, absolutely competent and completely devoid of any life to me. So, uh, yeah, this is the Mojo Tone 50 watt head. This is the um, this is the cabinet they give you with the kit. But if you want to get the kit without a cabinet, you can order this cabinet and change all these colors and you can call them on the phone. You can do whatever you want. They probably got 30 colors of Tolex. Um, it's got standby, master, and gain, passive and active circuits, and bass, treble, and mid shift. And the mid shift, I don't know, isn't doing that much for me. So, and I'm gonna play it, I'm gonna hack it, because I'm not that great a player, but that's an Ampeg. Uh, 1 by 15 and that's the uh, that's an elite series uh, P bass there so all right I'm gonna the tones will come through this condenser mic so hopefully I'll really capture this it's kinda got a creamy tubey kinda thing which I like a lot so I'm gonna switch over and uh, switch the audio over and play some tones cool okay let's do this uh, this is my P bass pickup setting with a uh, tone rolled off. Okay, now I'm going to go on the jazz pickup with the tone all the way up. Now I've got the gain halfway and the master halfway, the bass rolled off from halfway just slightly. So I'm gonna pump up the gain, which I've never even done, but let's try it just to test the tones. So gain all the way up, master down. So I think overall a pretty good set of tones. I, I like this little amp here. 50 watts, good for uh, practicing and small gigs. So there we go. I'm talking about the kit because some of y'all are going to want to build this kit. And if you've ever built Mojo Tone, I built one other one, which is the 5E3, the Fender Deluxe. And that one, that kit comes with a full-blown manual has steps and everything and a schematic and a, di a diagram like this picture. This 50 watt bass amp kit does not have all that because it's just not as popular. So you get a schematic, you get a nicely organized, you know, set of parts, which I'll show you pictures of that in a minute. And you get this schematic. Um, well, it's not really a schematic. It's more like a diagram. Uh, and it's 
you know, it's pretty good. I mean, this is what I relied on to build mine. I went slow and steady and it worked out fine. Let me show you the next picture here. And it's a it's a real turret board. This was pretty easy to solder with. And behind it, you can see the, you get like a, a plastic sort of divide. It has dividers and the parts are identified in there. And you just go one at a time and pick the parts out of there and solder them on the board. The chassis and my workspace and, you know, I like just, I built it in my kitchen. It probably took like, I'd say, I don't know, eight or nine hours, but I'm like, you know, I'm drinking wine. I'm listening to music. I'm taking breaks and stuff. And uh, in the background there, you see that soldering iron. I would definitely get a good soldering iron. You're going to want that if you ever build one of these kits. And for a turret board with the little, little kind of turrets that stick up, they require a little more power. So you want like a soldering iron with some adapters on it, different, um, different pins at the end. So you use like a fatter one to heat up the turret. Uh, anyway, the turret's high quality, parts are good quality, no problem. All right, this picture is showing sort of, I don't know, 80% done. The, uh, the filaments aren't wired to the tubes yet, but I'm just, I'm following the schematic and you can see I'm kind of trying to do square bends in the wires just to keep things neat. It's just, it's a lot of little steps, you know, it's a lot of, you know, looking at the diagram, being real careful, looking back over your work, but it's totally doable. Just, uh, you know, I'm still in the kitchen, just testing. You're going to want to test the thing when you build it um, with a, you know, with a meter, checking voltages on the filaments and, uh the big wires, the, the big AC voltage and the rectifier. And uh, you, you know, you turn it on without tubes at first. And uh, if you have run into problems, uh, best advice I read online is divide and conquer. Just divide the amp into systems like power supply, fuses and switching, um, rectifier circuit, filaments, you know, that kind of thing. If you've got like noise in the preamp, which I did have, I did it, I chopstick, you know, I got a chopstick and started tapping around and that input circuit was super noisy. Sure enough, there was one, a ground I'd forgotten. So I fixed that and that was the only thing I forgot to do on the whole uh, amp was one ground. Uh, fully assembled all the knobs on and everything tested and uh, ready to put into the case. So, um, you know, I really enjoyed this. It was, um, it was super interesting and fun. And I just turned my phone off and uh, built it slow and steady and had a couple glasses of wine. It was super fun. And I really liked the sound of it. I mean, the I'm, you know, it sounds to me like a 60s amp, like those great, uh, sort of R&B songs and Beatles songs. This is exactly what this sounds like to me. So anyway, uh, good luck with it if you decide to build it. I mean, I, I say go for it. It's about a thousand bucks, but you know, at the end, if you fix it, you've got a totally hand-wired, awesome amp uh, that sounds fantastic. Enjoy. Good luck, people.